Hello, Ben City. This is Sutu. I am here with TMC Media. We are at Culture Sound Studios, and I am so stoked to be having a chat with the man himself, the man who blew into our radar, radar in 2020 uh, with the track Bella Chow, Mr. Tyler ICU. How are you going? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. So, listen, Melbourne is like the mecca of music. Do you feel the vibe since you've been here so far? I can't say because I haven't been out like that in terms of like the clubs and everything because I'm not really like an outgoing going person. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, I'm okay. a, I'm a homebody. I'm an introvert, so yeah. I can't really say. But in all the other uh, well, towns that I've been into, like your Perth and Brisbane, it was it was actually crazy. We had a lot of fun. So yeah. How was Perth? I really don't like Perth. Really? I. <laughs> I don't know, Perth reminds me of a huge mining town. <laughs> Is that the vibe you got or was it a different vibe? <laughs> no, man. I, like, I don't know, for some reason when I'm here, it's, it just feels like I'm still in South Africa. I don't know. Is it because it's in the South also or what? Maybe it's because there's a lot of South Africans here as well. I don't know, but like it was, Perth was, felt like a little bit of Cape Town. I mean, like, yeah, yeah it was. It was a little bit empty, but later there's like too many people in the streets, like just walking around. Like, okay, <laughs> okay, this is good. Okay, I felt at home, so yeah. Yeah. And by the way, is this like your first trip to Australia? Yeah, it is. It is. It is my first time in Australia. Well, I didn't think I would be in Australia. Okay. So what? Did, how did you feel like when you got that call? Like, hey, listen, I want you to come through. Were you excited? What were your thoughts? Like, what did you think about Australia? You were like. I'm going to Australia. This is what I'm gonna see. I, th I think I think I think I was ready for it because my my friend came here first before I did. Visca came, so he was doing the Vastrata tour. Yeah. So I so I was like, oh, I saw his videos. So I was like, oh, actually they really like I'm a piano this side. So I was excited. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna show him that I'm gonna get the same vibe as him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I was actually on the tour with Daliwanga and Visca. He's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you guys are close friends. Yeah, yeah, we're close friends. Awesome. Close, super close. Okay, so let's talk about your roots in music. Yeah. You know, let's talk about where you started. I read somewhere that at 10 years old, you were just like, I want to start making music. And I read somewhere that Dr. Dre was your influence. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what song? Give me a song by Dr. Dre that you... It was, it was not a song. It was the whole album, Chronic 2002. That shit was crazy. Wow. It was epic for me. My dad used to play that thing every day. So that's how I got to say, these beats are insane. So your dad was a hip hop head? My dad was a DJ. That's how I got into music because he was collecting a lot of music and at the same time he was DJing at the tavern in Ekasi. You know, wow. so, so whenever I would come out from school, I would, like when I go to school, I wear like home, like home warm clothes yeah. and then I'd put the uniform on top so that when I, when I come out of school, I just take off the clothes and put it inside the school bag so I can go to his gig. Really? So I'll stay there the whole entire time. So, wow. yeah. So, considering that your dad was doing all of this, have you found that your family is supportive of your career and what you're doing? So, like, is your dad encouraging? Or? Yeah, yeah. My dad was the one who was, like, super encouraging more than my mom. My mom just felt like this thing was not going to go anywhere. Maybe it was because he saw it from her husband, the way oh. she kind of felt like... Ah uh, no, he did this thing for too long and then he never really went yeah. super big. But yeah. yeah, when I started doing it, it was kind of off, like difficult between both of them because the other one is supporting, the other one is not supporting. So it was just, it was just a thing like that. But my dad was very supportive. He, he bought me my first computer and helped me out to like get microphones and stuff. So yeah. Wow. So what does your mom say when she sees you now? Oh, now she's very <laughs> she's happy. So, now she's, now like, she's the one like, who's always like <laughs> watching my, my stories and be the one to download my stories without telling me now and, and posting <laughs> on her stories and say, look at my kid, look at my oh. kid. <laughs> so, yeah. That must feel awesome. So do you have a big family? Or? No, no, no. We, we, we don't have a big family. Uh, it's just me, my mom, my dad. 
my gran and my brother. Wow. So I grew up in South Africa, believe it or not. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Cajiso, and I know that growing up in the township, there's such a, a nice blend of people. You know, you've got the Pantsulas, you've got the bougie people, yeah, yeah. and you've got the um, coconuts. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, and I can say that it can be split up into different genres of music. So you've got yeah. your hip hop, R&B lovers, you've got the Guaito lovers, and you've also got the house lovers. Yeah. So growing up in Tembisa, because I read somewhere that you grew up in Tembisa, yeah. how do you think that blend of, I guess, musical culture influenced you? Mm, I mean, well, with how it is in Tembisa is like, no, especially like, well, my street is very, there's very all types of pe people, like it varies. So like with me, like growing up, it was it was a little bit of touch of this because at some point I was a dancer and I was dancing this bourgeois and, <laughs> and, and then I met my other friend at school who was dancing panzola, I was into panzola, yeah. but also it was just like a whole different kinds of taste. And especially when my, when my cousin moved right next to us, cause he was listening to more hip hop and R and B. And then that's where I think I got really like more introduced into like Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. So then Lil Wayne is like, the person that pushed me to like really really do music because yeah. I was like oh damn this guy can rap so it means I can rap too so now I was there just writing lyrics but yeah. we the biggest problem we had it was just beats you know mm -hmm. so when my when my other cousin moved to the very same street that we stay in it just made like a whole lot of sense because he was producing Guaito for all oh, Anaconda and stuff so I was like okay let me learn what you're doing. And then I saw what he was doing and then I was just copying from him, but like making hip hop music. So that's how I got into like producing more, especially into hip hop music around that time. Okay. So you know the track Sporo? Yeah. So are you rapping in that track? No, 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 I'm producing. You're producing. Okay. <laughs> cause I was just like, cause I was listening to it. I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah. is this Tyler? <laughs> but have you put down your lyrics on a, on a track? like? Is my research not good enough? Because I'm like, I, I was I, digging, I'm I, like... I did, but I never put out any of the songs. <laughs> there is a snippet on TikTok, though. But okay. then it's not art. So it's just like something I was like, okay, I'm just doing it so the other person can see that. I, I actually can sing or rap, but like singing, though. So, yeah. Yeah. You know what? There's something that you said in April, and I want to say it verbatim. You know, <laughs> so I'm going to bring it up and I want to ask you about what what you said in April. Yeah, yeah. Where is up? So in April, you tweeted, everyone is asking about why I'm not doing hip hop. My thing is people in the community of hip hop producers are treated like shit. Yeah. So for people who, you know, don't know you personally and don't know what you meant, what do you mean? Because I think you were coming from a South African perspective, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being South African, I actually know what you mean. But yeah, for the people who don't. I mean, in terms of South Africa, as like as a hip hop producer, they only treat you nice like in the beginning when they're trying to get the beat from you. Mm. Once they get the beat from you, they don't call you for the music videos. They don't even put you as a feature of anything. They just take the beat from you or it's either they pay you or they just get a contract to say you're gonna get your royalty money and that's about it. You're not invited to anything. They don't mention you when they go into interviews or anything, you yeah. understand? So it was like, when I met Pori and Ricky, they're the people that influenced me to like change that. I think I helped a lot of upcoming other producers and the, also the other producers that were also in the game when I, I actually became the first uh, producer being featured on hip hop songs, you know? So that kind of like changed the whole entire thing that now a lot of producers now, they actually know that, okay, we wanna be mentioned so that their brands also grow and also like they're able to just like be doing beats for other people. Yeah. So it, it, was a, it was a thing like that. So for me, that's, that's, that was there like my tweet of like, I won't do it again because of every time you have to keep fighting with the artists to say, yo, mention me, put me as a feature, you know? Because, like, mm. I mean, without my beat, you wouldn't have this hit song that yeah. you have. So it was a thing of like that. So having said that, from that, 
which type of producer, like which genre of music uh, producer in South Africa and even the world do you feel like is more respected? Oh, my piano. My piano is like the like best. <laughs> like my piano is like the super best. It's like whoever is doing something on the song is featured on the song. Yeah. It's like whatever you do, if you come in to play a saxophone and leave, we're going to put you there say, uh, J Sex. You know? Yeah. That's you there. Whatever you do, uh, Polani guitars, you understand? It's like, mm -hmm. whatever you do on the song, we're going to put your name on the song. So for people who don't ad understand, you know, the world of music and being an artist, why is it so important to be mentioned in a feature? I mean, it's, uh, it's important in terms of growing your brand, because, like, you can get royalties and whatsoever, but then if you only got one chance of working with that one artist and they don't talk about you to the next artist, that means you won't get another uh, another bag, mm -hmm. you understand? So, but like, if now they mention you on the thing and then everybody's like, okay, I'm listening to this song and I know, oh, this one was playing the guitars, so Tolani guitars, if I need guitars, I can call Tolani guitars, or oh, who did this beat? Oh, Tala, I see you did the beat. Okay, I can, I can call Tala, I see you to do me a beat, you understand? So, mm -hmm. it's, that thing helps everyone in the music industry grow you know yeah. so yeah that's that's the importance of just being mentioned on the song being featured on the song yeah one thing i notice about you is that you're very open to collaborating with people yeah why is that i feel i mean i feel like there's there's a big enough cake for everyone mm. i can't just be stingy and be like yeah, i, I want to take all this money for myself there's a big enough cake for everyone i mean we can do, we can do, we can be on the same song, but not all of us are going to be booked in the same place. I mean, like, with Banyana, the Tories, wherever he is, I'm here, uh, the other guys are wherever that they are. It's a very big enough cake yeah. for all of us to eat, so I don't see it as a problem to not feature people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of Banyana, you know, I... I feel yeah. like you've got the Midas touch, you know? <laughs> yeah. But instead of turning things into gold, you turn things into platinum. So yeah. congratulations yeah. on the Thank track Banyana so. and what you guys have been able to achieve. So tell me about the moment when you were like, when you heard the news, you've gone platinum. What yeah. were you doing? What was your reaction? How did you celebrate? <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, keep it PG, keep it PG. No, it is PG, man. Okay. I, don't, I don't really do a lot. I don't really do a lot. I yeah. Mean, what we did is like, okay, cool, we find out we are platinum. Uh, Puri said, no, I, let's take the studio and then we're going to take all my cars. We're going to go do a spin show in Rustenburg and then we can have a studio and then we can have a lot of girls there and just celebrate the whole thing. And it, for me, it was also a good thing because I was just coming out of a relationship at that time. So I was like, actually, I need that space. On to the next <laughs> I need that space. Yeah. So that, 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 that was like our celebration for the year. And we, we had a lot of fun in that whole two weeks. Okay. So who did you celebrate with? Actually, I want to hear about your mom. What was your mom's reaction since she was the pessimist at first? <laughs> oh, no, my mom. <laughs> and, yeah, my mom, my mom actually, like, she didn't really see the whole entire thing until I said, here's a bag, go build a house. And then and that's where she was like. Wow. Oh, damn, so you, you're making this much money? Yeah. That's where she was like, OK. This is a big enough celebration. She, she was just happy about it. I think that's how we celebrate it. So with all your success, you know, and it's obviously still building because I can, I think I can safely say you are a world, world renowned DJ, world renowned producer. What does that mean to that young boy, you know, that was growing up in Timbisa? You know, I think that people don't really understand how it's like growing up in a township in South Africa. Yeah. And not only are you faced with obstacles in, you know, going to school or whatever, but within your community itself, there's a lot of things that can kind of keep you back, that can hold you back, and a lot of people that can as well. So what does it mean to that young boy that started off listening to Dr. Dread 10, watching his dad DJ, like thinking about your success? I think for me is like, for me, it just means 
creating your own world instead of like having pe people's pers perspective be your own reality as the best way to just get out of any town or any place to just go wherever you want to go so it really means a lot to just be where i'm at right now but i feel like it's it's, it's still a stepping stone for me because i think i've i've seen a lot of better things that i all well a lot of ba better spaces that i want to be in than where i am now mm. so yeah you know what i know a lot of producers djs here in melbourne yeah. that are like fangirling you I'm telling you, they watch your videos, they watch how you do things, they watch how you drop that beat here. Yeah. So what's your creative process? How do you get into a space? Because I saw on one of your stories when, you know, you were premiering Jealousy. Yeah. You know, you had a whole bunch of people around you <laughs> yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Is that what you normally do when you make music or is it a more solitary process and then you invite people in? Um... In most cases, that it's much more, it's much more better to have people around, cause now it's it helps you not to focus like on on one thing, cause like when you're alone, you get to be more in your head, cause like I know I I be a, like from like when I start and I'm alone, I'm already like in my head, like I already like, cause I'm forcing to make what's in my head to come out, so it's like my thought process of like making a song is that i want to start alone to just make sure that whatever that idea i had in my head i want to start building that first and then i'm going to take a break go catch a drink go catch a smoke and then i'm going to call the people that i had was like okay cool i wanted to have this artist here i wanted to have this artist going there so okay i wanted to have who and who to as a producer to come at this or as a pianist to come at this type of a thing so i'll call it call of all of them at the same time so all of us can just like build off to that one thing wow yeah so as a producer are you involved in the other areas like for example if you want to add a horn do you go baby baby Baby, baby, to the to the yeah, saxophonist yeah. and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. And even with a musician, are you gonna go like, hey, sing this line? Is that yeah? Is that some, what you do? Sometimes I come up with with, with well with like melodies and not lyrics. Mm -hmm. And know, I feel like it's easier when the 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 writer sings the melody with their own lyrics that makes sense to them. Yeah. So yeah, but like in other cases, it's like I'll just tell them of like how I'm feeling of like, okay, maybe we'll have like a conversation before even just going to the studio with the artist where like, I'm just bouncing off like, okay, this is what I'm going through. And then I feel like I could make a very good song with something like this. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just speak their own story and be like, yeah, I've went through this at the same time. It's like, okay, cool. You know, so, and then we just share that kind of an idea so that whenever we go into a studio, we already have the feeling, we're already in the feeling of, what we want to do. Mm, I really like that. I think it's very, it's unique, it's different, and it's very inclusive, and it involves people in your process. Yeah. So tell me about the song Jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So where did that come from? Where did that oh, come man, from? That's... Did you come up with the actual title of the song? I Are didn't come up with, kind of with the really, like, actual title of those things. It was just like... It was just me and the boys because I, I had a lot of people in the studio that day. Like we were knocking, I think we knocked like nine songs that day, like wow. just that night alone. So, cause like we're just chilling in the studio and then I like having conversations, smoking shisha, hardly going around, drinks going around at the same time and just like speaking of both like our experiences and then and how like, we feel like other people that we, well, you know, as like an, as like, well, it goes into like everyone and every step of success. Whenever like you get successful, there's, you get, you tend to leave some of you, the friends that you feel like they hold you back, that they don't have the same vision as you. Mm. And those people tend to be jealous towards you because like 
they tell they feel like why are you leaving me behind don't you think i have the same vision as you but you already like know that this person whenever conversation we have it it doesn't make sense mm. you know so then they become jealous towards you and then that that was the thing it was like hey I've, I've changed and it's not a bad thing for me but then it's a bad thing for you because now you jealous towards yeah, yeah you jealous towards what I'm going through mm. you know and I've worked hard for what I'm going through so if you and I are not seeing eye to eye with the vision that I have then we can't be friends wow so another song that is so popular like I see Black people, white people, Indian people, Aboriginal people, everyone yeah. is singing Nige. Yeah. And the number one question that I get as a South African is, is he saying the N-word, C2? Is he saying the N-word? Is it Nige? Oh. <laughs> so for people, I know what a Nige means, of course, but yeah. for people who don't know, can you let the masses know, what does Nige mean? Nige means give. <laughs> <laughs> give. That's what it means. It means give. Yeah. Nige. Like whether it's nige or nigger. It's still <laughs> give. Nigger, it's give. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah, actually. It's okay. Actually, this year has, has, been, uh, has been a whole controversial thing going around my songs because I have one of the other songs burned from Russia. Because, yeah. wow. Oh, really? Which song? Suka. What does it mean in Russian? Uh... Miss Bitch. Suga. Yeah. Shut the front door. <laughs> wow, guys. Suga means bitch yeah. in Russian. In Russian. But in South African, it means move away. away. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So do, do you, have you gotten the same question about nigga? With, with Suga, I didn't get the question. I just saw my song being banned every time when yeah. I post. I post it says this song is burned in Russia. This song is burned in Russia. I'm like, oh, yeah. maybe you should label it Sukai. <laughs> <laughs> it's already out, bro. Shut the video. Everything is. No, nah, you can you change know, the title in Russia. It's, that, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> Russians have to forgive me, you yeah. know. But yeah. yeah, well, that happened. But anyway, Nige means give. Nika. Give is the same thing. Yeah. There's no difference. It doesn't mean the N word. So you, as a white person, can say <laughs> ni ka, not ni ga. Yeah, ni not the G. Ka. It's, it's a, a K. K. Ni it's ka. a K. <laughs> ni ka. Yeah, yeah, I get that question so many times. It's not even funny, and that just shows how popular the song is. Did you see uh, Wiz Khalifa's post, and he was playing your song in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen. The post. What did you think of that? I feel like it's still a stepping stone, man. Like, yeah. uh, I celebrated it, but it was like, it was not too much of a celebration. I was like, oh, damn, shout out. Okay, cool, that's dope. Like, until something, like, if you asked to do the remix, at least that could have been something, <laughs> you know? True, <laughs> like, like, yeah, don't play my song in the background. Ask yeah, me for a feature. Ask me for a feature, bro, <laughs> like, you know? So is he, like, one of the artists that you would like to collaborate with, actually, tell me, tell me about your your dream chat of artists that you want to co collaborate with. Yeah, for, ish, I think it's, it's in, uh, in terms of like collaborations for me, I go with what I hear that's unique because mm -hmm. I feel like in all the artists that I feature, I feature in my songs, you hear a different taste and like just the music itself, it's a sort of unique from like the the other guys that we do on my piano or you listen to on my piano from that's where it's like you well now i'm in like the distortion type of i'm a piano was like my my well you, when you listen to my song they sound very distorted they're like hitting you know and it's, it's, it's that so i chase i chase a very unique sound so like i feel like me and the weekend could really make a very good banger Oh, weird. so you, you like weird, weird. Yeah, okay. weird, weird. Uh, yeah. Play Bokadi is very weird. I like that, okay. you know? So play Bokadi, we could really do something crazy. Yeah. Uh, Doja Cat, actually. Hey, that would be a you know? nice <laughs> That would be amazing. Yeah, so I chased, I chased the weird, weird spaces of like where 
where good and evil meet, <laughs> I guess. Actually, that makes me that makes me wonder, you know, because I don't like based on that. I'm, I'm maybe I'm making an assumption, but I feel like I'm at piano is not where you're gonna stop. Do you feel like you're going to expand uh. your creative? Tentacles. It is expanded. It's just a matter of like other things. It's like I can't put them out yet. Okay. And I can't even post Ooh. about them yet because it's like tease. no tears, nothing, <laughs> nothing. You're not giving nothing. us anything. Nothing. I mean, Kanye West was ahead of time for too long, and we didn't hear anything unless he dropped. Mm. So it's kind of it's kind of me being me. There, it's like okay, mm. I just follow all the greats and I chase whatever that they, they've been doing. I mean, like, Pharrell's always been unique every time. Whatever sound he, he comes up with is, has always been that. so, yeah. So we should expect weird and wonderful things in the future. Yeah, it's it's weird, but it's very listenable. Like, yeah. you, you, like, Nigga, for instance, it's, you didn't think that bass line was going to come, right, after those hey. soft voices. Because hey. you just hear, Nika. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, this is so sweet. This and the next lovely. thing is boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like, what the hell just happened? So, yeah. So I saw the visuals for Suga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really, really liked it. <laughs> I really, really, like, you know, because I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd. Like, I, yeah. I do a lot of reading and stuff. And I know that Asian people are descendants of Southern Africans. Yes. Peep that knowledge. Anyway, I, I really like the videos, how you guys just did something different. I don't feel like it's been done yes. uh, in South Africa before. And it kind of like... Well, with Kanye, so she's, she's also closer. Oh. So okay. Kanye, Kanye also, like, knows the study that, well... Oh, 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 the clicks, yeah. those people and yeah. the Asians, they go together. The <laughs> exactly. They go together. You see? So, yeah. 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 So she, she's very really smart and she came up with the idea, like from even just the artwork from just the song when it was coming out first. At first, it was. I like Asian it even one. more now, the like, fact that she knew that and she incorporated no, that. No, she's, she's, yeah. she's very smart, like super smart. Yeah. So, yeah. So with the so she came up with a whole lot of the the, the stuff for Suga, ne? Like yeah, the me, visuals, the creative. Yeah, I visuals. came with the idea of the song. Mm. Like, okay, I just hear the the beat is just going, and I just hear Suka, Suka, and I called her, and she was in Pumalanga, like the other town. Like, yo, where are you? Like, I'm in Pumalanga. I'm like, can you get an access to a studio? <laughs> She's like, I don't know, but I can try. I'm like, I have this idea. If you can do it, it can be a banger. And she's like, okay, what do you want me to do? So I'm like, okay, I want you to say this and then do a small verse. Don't do a lot, like a small verse, like super tiny, like very small. That's why it's like, and all throughout the song, you just hear suka. Mm -hmm. And then only in the bridge you can hear her doing the verse Very and then back to Suka. Mm. <laughs> so it was like, let's just make it a dance song. Let's just do Suka all over the whole entire song. So whoever is listening, just hearing Suka, Suka, Suka. That's mm. it. Yeah. So when you're making a beat, is your intention, you know, because I know there's a huge, you know, TikTok and, you know, TikTok dances is a huge collaboration now with music and dancing yeah. you know so are you keeping that in mind whenever you're making a beat are you calling uh dancers going hey listen here's a banger no. what should we do or do you just no no i don't my music is not like however i do music i well my cheat code is has always been the simplest thing ever mm. radio <laughs> yeah I want to do a song that you can hear on radio. Mm. That's that's my cheat code. Yeah. My cheat code is like whenever I'm making a song, I'm thinking of radio, not the social media. Yeah. The social media looks gravitates to the songs because of as something they would love to hear on radio. And nowadays they don't listen to radio anymore. They mm. listen to TikToks. Yeah. They listen to social media. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Mm. So yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, because I, I was going to say, like, I'm not sure how the culture... I haven't been back home since 2011, so I'm not sure how the radio culture is. But here in Australia, I guess for an artist, really, radio is, is not really a big thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not yeah. in comparison to all the different platforms, social media platforms and, you know, all the streaming sites. I feel like radio plays... It plays a role, but not as quite a bigger role as what I imagine in South Africa. So are you having a world view of how your music is going to be received or when songs like Nika and um, Nika and Bella Chow became famous, were you just like, whoa, I didn't know everyone else was going to like this? Uh... I mean, from just like the making of each and every song, as I've already got an idea because I, I go with what I want to hear. Because growing up, I listened to a lot of a lot of radio, so I was like, a lot of pop music in terms of radio played a role for me. So, like all your Taylor Swift, your Lady Gaga's, I've always listened to like, okay, this whole. This whole music thing is just, if you get it right for the radio, n there's no way it can fail. Mm. There's no way it can fail. Mm. So, and all of the big songs, like, I mean, like, from just studying uh, the movies, your Get Rich or Die Trying, your Straight Outta Compton, your uh, Notorious B.I.G., you look at when they were making Juice, Juice was, Juice was made for the radio, they were like, no, do a song without you swearing, just do something for the radio. Mm. And then that's the song that really blew up, that everyone, when you start saying B.I.G., they just think of Juice mm. instead of the other rap songs. Yeah. So I was like... That's actually very wise. That's very wise. So where do you think you, you're going from here? Like, where... What's next? What's next for the people who look up to you, admire you, and follow what you're doing? You have to stay in tune, bro. <laughs> Can't like, you give us a bit of a teaser? Like, a smart you have teaser. To stay, you have to stay in tune because yeah. we, we're dropping Dumel's album. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very different from all the other piano albums that have dropped in all of the years. That's the, like going back to like like going back to like Bella Ciao, the reason like just that album itself like Money Heist it still resonates to a lot of people that have like listened to that album and mm -hmm. and they still feel like yo this is one of the greatest album is because it was just unique from the time it came out mm -hmm. and also this one is gonna be unique also it's like the amount of work we put into in terms of like collaborations in terms of sound also as that's gonna be a very game changer, like how Nika is, you know? So, yeah. Cool. So, for your fans here in Australia, you've been to Perth. What was the other city? Is it Brisbane? Yeah, Brisbane. You've been to Brisbane. Uh, you're gonna perform in Melbourne. Yeah. What's the last city you're gonna be in? The last city is Melbourne, because. I oh, think I'm okay. spending a lot of time in Melbourne. Oh, you're going to go to Adelaide? Um, no, 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 we're doing no. Sydney. Sydney, I'm yes. with you. See, I was testing you. <laughs> I was seeing if you're paying attention. No, no, um, no, I am paying yeah. attention. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, for your fans here in Australia, you're going to be in Sydney? Yeah, I think in... Well, for, for the other two states that have, like, heard, heard my mixes, mm -hmm. I think... If if you do have the money to fly to Sydney and Melbourne, I think you should do that because I'm going to be playing a different set. Because wherever I go, I play a different set. So whatever music you hear on in Brisbane, that's not what you will hear when I was in Perth. And it's not mm -hmm. the one you're going to hear when I'm in Sydney. And it's not the one that you're going to hear when I'm in Melbourne. Yeah. Because... All the sets, they differ, and I just go with the crowd, and I just make you feel... Like, I just give you an experience, basically, yeah. of the type of person I am. Okay. Well, thank you so much for thank having a so chat much, with yeah. me. And um, good luck on your tour in Australia. And in the future, I'm just honored that I get this opportunity because I'm going to save this video. <laughs> I'm like, I interviewed Tyler, I see you. That's what I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I foresee bigger and better things for you. And I cannot wait.